Hey guys, welcome to the 30 second C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own events. So, all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a class. And inside of your class, just make sure that you have a public property. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead right here and create our event. So, we're just going to say public since we want our event to be public. And then we're just going to say event. Alright, now after the event keyword, we have to provide a delegate. And this delegate will decide the return type of our subscriber methods and what parameters will be passed to our subscriber methods. And a subscriber method is basically any method that wants to be called whenever the event is raised or the, whenever the event occurs. So, for example, um, this method right here is a subscriber method. It subscribes to the button one click event. So whenever the button one is clicked, then this method right here will be called. And the return type for this method is obviously void, and the two parameters that are passed through are an object called sender and event arguments. And event arguments are basically just information about the event. And this right here is just the default um, delegate. It's called the event handler delegate. And that just means that the return type will be void, and these are the parameters that look will be passed to the subscriber event. An object sender, and this is basically just the sender object or the object that it came from. And then, like I said, event arguments are just information about um, the event. And the event arguments class, just on its own, event args, um, basically has no information about the event. So if you have no information to pass about your event, you can just use um, the event handler delegate. So you can just go ahead up here and say public event and then put event handler after it. So this is our delegate that we're going to be using for our event. And then following the delegate, we just want to give a name to our event. I'm just going to call it um, on property changed because this event is going to be raised whenever um, our property is changed. And then of course we just have to end the line with a semicolon. All right, so basically like I said, we just want this event to be raised whenever this property right here is changed. So we're just going to say right here, after it sets the um, name string to the value that the user sets this property to, we're just going to go ahead and raise this event. So to raise the event, we're just going to say on property changed, and then right through here is where we want to pass the parameters. We have to pass through an object sender, and obviously the object that it came from is this class right here. So we can just say this. And then for the event arguments, we're just going to have to create our own event arguments. So we can just say new um, event arguments, since we have no information to pass through um, about our event. All right, so now we successfully have created our event, and this event will be raised whenever this property right here is changed. And I haven't really explained this yet, but an event is basically just a special type of delegate. And what makes it so different from a delegate is you can only use the plus equals and minus equals operator with it. Meaning you won't be able to say on property changed equals null. So you won't be able to wipe all of the methods stored inside of our event. So you can basically only add methods to your event or take the method that you added away. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead right here and um, I'm gonna show you how to use this event right here. So we're just gonna have to create a new instance of our class. So my class. It's going to call it mc instead of equal to a new instance of my class. And then we're just going to want to create a new event handler for our event. So we're just going to say mc dot on property changed. And then we're just going to say plus equals. And then we're just going to hit tab twice. So basically what we did right here is we just added this method to the event. So now whenever the event um, is raised, this method right here is going to be called. And I'm just going to have a message box show saying um, the property has changed because this event or this method will only be called when the property is changed. So I'm just going to say the property has changed. All right. And right now the property hasn't changed. So whenever I click the button, nothing's going to happen. Yep. And now if I were to go ahead and change the property, this method right here will be called. So if I say mc dot name equals and then like Adam or something then right here it's going to tell us that the property has changed because of course we did change the property yep perfect 
All right, and let me just go ahead right here and walk you through this one more time because it's sort of confusing. All right, so right up here, we just created our event. And we just said public event since we wanted to make our event public. And then we said event handler. And this event handler is basically just a delegate. And the delegate, like I said, will decide what the return type for the subscribing method must be and what the parameters passed to the subscribing methods will be. And since we use this default event handler delegate, um, the return type for the method was void and the parameters passed through was an object called sender and event arguments. And remember, event arguments is basically just information um, about the event. And just the event arguments class on its own basically means that there's no information about the event to be passed through. All right. And then what we did right here is whenever the user changed the property, we raised this event. So we just said on property change, which is the name of our event. And then for the object sender that we had to pass through, we just did this. And then we had to pass through event arguments. And of course, since there's no information about the event, we just did new event arguments right there. All right, and more about on this delegate. You could go ahead and create your own delegate and have custom parameters be passed through and your own return type. But we're just going to leave it at that for right now. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial on creating your own event. So see you guys.